Good morning everybody. It's cold, it's wet, I'm half asleep and I'm going to Manchester today. I hate queuing for chargers, not doing it. CCS adapter, absolutely essential. If you have one of the old Teslas, you need one of these. Thank God for superchargers. <laughs> and this is a busy one. We've, um, yeah, there, there's no spaces now. And for most of our journey up the M1, there were no spaces, so it was quite handy. But the good news is because there's eight bays here instead of just two quick chargers, even if it was all full, the chances are one of them would open up pretty darn quick. Yeah, gotta say, superchargers. Fantastic idea, well done Tesla. And now I get to do some editing on my phone. Yeah. Nick! Hello! Nice to see you again. Nice it's been ages. You. It has. That's why I get GoPro. <laughs> I'll have to put this in it. That, that is why I like using a GoPro for vlogging. <laughs> for exactly that reason. You're trying to say that James is Nerding out camera. about cameras. <laughs> Amazing. Cool rig. Right, okay, so I'm here with Nick, as I said, and he's going to be talking about his awesome batteries. Like, multiple batteries which is a bit odd. And also you seem a bit taller than I when I last saw you. You've you, you shrunk as your old age. Is it get, you know, gray hair now, now you're now you looking Yeah, actually, it, it, <laughs> it could be that. I, I might have shrunk a bit. <clears throat> you can't <spell> that. <laughs> <laughs> now you see, this is why we like having the little 360 degree camera here, because it means I have actually got a shot of your feet. <laughs> uh, still, still not being accurate to life. So let's, let's talk about the batteries. What have we got here? So you got two, very fancy. Yes, yeah, so you got two different batteries. So this is um, this is the one uh, from Alpha, and this is one from Livatech. So this is an AC couple battery, a bit like a Tesla battery. No solar inputs. Charges off the the grid. Discharges depending what the house load is. You know, and that that's all that is. Just basically similar to. A test the battery and then you've got two five kilowatt hour modules so it's five and ten nice. so this is an inverter this does the charge and the discharging and then those are the battery modules underneath so that's Fantastic. like a master module which is why it's bigger and yeah. this, it's stackable i think this one's a 35 kilowatt hours so you can get a lot of power out of it nice this is a bit more better looking in my personal opinion. It, it is a bit nicer looking, isn't it? It's a bit more like a Tesla Power Wall kind of like design, like, you know, prettier. You, you'd have it in, in display maybe in your house. Maybe. Maybe. Um, so that is the inverter. And then that's a five kilowatt hour battery module again. Right, so that's just five kilowatt hours. That's just five kilowatt hours. Right. So, but if you look, it's a lot thinner. That's true. To, against the wall, so there's a lot, a lot less depth out in it. And it's also a lot slimmer that way as well. So the da yeah, I suppose this is kind of the same size as one of those, just sort of yeah, just just flipped upside down and then stretched, and then obviously this part here is just where the electrics are. So that's just you know all the battery power co connections. Mm -hmm. But this one's a hybrid inverter, so this one can take solar as well as AC power from the grid. So it can charge up off the grid, right. but you can feed your solar strings directly into the bottom of this, and then it will charge off the solar. DC and charge the battery so you're not, at DC. So you've, so you've not, not got the AC losses, whereas this one, yeah, it still technically is charging from solar if you're generating enough power to do that from your solar panels. But you're converting but it's having it. to convert it into grid AC power that is then being converted back into DC for the battery. Oh, I see. I Correct. See. Yeah. So this is awesome then. Yeah. So that's that's a lot more efficient. I've got no solar into this though because I, this 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 was a pre so this was a pre battery test right. prior to me getting. So this is um, the loanable solar. one, is it? No, this one's a keeper. Oh, uh, that th one's a keeper. Uh, this okay. one's a loanable off heatable. So okay. th this this keeper here from Livatech, this um, I, I reviewed it as basically a hybrid uh, a hybrid battery inverter, but I couldn't review the solar, so I just I reviewed it as AC coupled. So I no. charge it off the grid, discharge it from the grid. What's nice about this one is I can charge it off the grid, but I can force discharge back to the grid. So you know how Octopus are doing yes. this D DFS event at the moment, where where the grid are paying people to lower grid consumption. Yeah, they're also paying extra for export. So really, four pound a kilowatt hour. Right, because here's the thing, right? So my mum, I, I obviously should have been watching your videos. He, Nick's got a YouTube channel, by the way, guys, and it's awesome. So well worth checking out if you're not already a subscriber of that. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, my mum should have been a subscriber of yours and looked at some of this stuff because I'm not super keen on her battery, if I'm honest. I'd like to be proven wrong. Which one she got? I can't even remember off the top of my head, but I did have a fiddle through the settings. Solax, Grow Watts. Um, give energy. 
give energy, I think. Right. But uh, I could be wrong, so I might have to cut this <laughs> bit out. I'll, I'll have a look. I'll tell it you to can, you. Can, to you text can put me. it somewhere down down here. And tell yeah. us what it is when you get back. Yeah, exactly. It'll be right here. <laughs> um, yes. So she's got solar panels that face kind of east. Okay. And there's a big tree, so she really needs the west side, which is less obstructed as well. That would be much better. Um, the house ridge sort of runs north south, unfortunately. Right. The problem is that she's only got them on the side which generates less power anyway. And so my idea was, well, she should get a battery, and I advised her to do that. Yeah. Because then what she can do is move on to one of those overnight tariffs, charge the battery at night, I'll charge my car at night, because I park around there because she's got the off-street parking for my car at the moment. And then during the day, she can use the solar panels to power the house for the most part, certainly in the morning. Uh, and then when it gets to evening time, like peak consumption, most expensive time of the day, then she can just swap to using only the battery. There's a few problems with that. The first one being that the actual battery will, I think it tops out at producing two and a half kilowatts, which is not enough to run the heat pump. Right. That it keeps her house hot and cool, right. depending on yeah. the time of the year. So that's number one problem. Secondly, if she puts a kettle on, it's going to be over the two and a half kilowatts. Yes. And on top of that, I can't even seem to find the right options to actually make the battery charge at night and discharge at a specific time during the day. I've sort of seen those options and I had a bit of a play with them so and some, then the battery ignored me. So some of the systems are really, so, so the whole point of what, the reason I've started reviewing batteries is, yeah. it's the same reason I started reviewing chargers. Most people, they just go, I've got this, so buy this. They've yeah. got no experience of any other tech because if you're buying a, an EV charger, you're buying a battery, you can't afford to buy two, three, yeah. four, and get a, an opinion of several. You yeah. know, or like a car where you've got an opinion of a couple because you've driven a few different cars. You yeah. can't have an opinion because you can't have a trial of a battery. Because, because who has three or four of them in their garage, or even two? <laughs> yeah, so th th these two actually can't operate at the same time. Yeah. So, be because they, they fight with each other. I've got a video on how I might fix that, but you can't have two different battery makes at the same time running simultaneously yeah. on the same grid because they fight each other for voltage and then they yeah. fight each other because they think they both think they're exporting and then they suck. So one of them blows, then the other one sucks and then they yeah, reverse. Yeah, so if you're not careful, you're going to end up with power going here and then going there and yeah. then going here. Yeah, yeah I see. Yeah. That, so, that would so, be no so, so, so it's a little bit of a problem, but what I've tried to do is I've tried to, I've reviewed this one extensively, gone through the app, mm -hmm. how it works. Now that's a five kilowatt inverter. Yeah. So that's that's brilliant for, for big loads. It'll charge, you know, almost a charge of Tesla at full power, so, you know, seven kilowatt. It'll easily run a kettle. Yeah. That is uh, 2.95. So that will just about cut out of a kettle, but main house use, it will, it will live with. Yes. Right. That would be different if you've got a heat pump, though. Yeah, that one can't force export to the grid. Right. That one can force export to the grid. So if you're getting paid really high amounts for export, that one's really good. That one can't do anything. Some of the battery systems, which I might be getting coming soon, the more battery cylinders you stack on them, yeah. the more power they can output. Which makes perfect sense, really, because actually a two and a half kilowatt inverter I can go on Amazon and buy one, and it's about this size with a fan on the back. It's it's nothing special. It costs like I don't know, not a lot of money. Yeah. In comparison, the actual inverter, you know, it's just a few extra coils, slightly thicker copper wire. That's it, more or less. Now the advantage I've got with this is because that's this one. Off heat, this is the one that Heatable you're using. It's AC coupled. Now yeah. Heatable only do AC coupled batteries. They don't do hybrid batteries. Yeah. And a lot of people go, oh, you got losses, but they thought about this, so. That's 2.9. They also do a 5 kilowatt hour version. They also do Tesla batteries uh, as well, which is 7, seven point something. I think someone will tell us in the yes. comments, I'm sure. Uh, so they do Tesla. They, they do Powerwall 2 batteries as well. So you can have a Tesla, or you can have an Alpha, or you can have a Give Energy. They've got loads of choices um, on the website. Can I plug my referral link? That would be a really good one, wouldn't it? <laughs> for your referral link for? For Heatable. So it's evnit.com yeah. forward slash Heatable. Um, but they, the reason they go for AC coupled is on the roof, I've got solar panels yeah. that are N-phase so, um, -phase, -phase microinverters on the back. So each panel has its own inverter on the back of it. Right. So every panel yeah. is an individual power micro, station. Yeah, little microinverters. Yeah. So one, so the panels are 410 watt. The microinverters 290 watt. Most of the time they never peak. Yeah. Because you always overspec your panel to your inverter. Always. 
and maybe throughout the t entire year I might see four percent clipping, but in the time like now in the winter, you know, they're, they're yeah. nowhere near their peak generation. No, unless you get a really big mi uh, magnifying glass and sort of, you know, yeah. concentrate the sun down. But there's, the advantage no is, in the summer, that's I've got 10 panels, 10 times 290, it's 2,900 watts, so 2.9 kilowatts. Yeah. And that inverter here is 2.9 kilowatts. If the house draws six and I'm producing full peak on solar and full peak on this, it's fine, it covers it because you've yeah. got AC coupled. So the, the, the advantage is if you have got yeah. AC coupled is you've got the power of the solar plus the battery, where if it's a hybrid inverter, you, it's limited to the power of the inverter. Yeah. So that's five kilowatt inverter. But that's where it stops, whereas yeah. this one could actually do six between the sun and the batteries. Yes. Got you. Yeah. Okay, that makes, that makes perfect sense. I don't know which one I would prefer personally. Yeah. I like the idea of like solar into the battery. So, solar into the, like, so the losses, the, there's some losses, but... It's not that much, is It's it? not that much. And then if you also think that the, I've got the advantage of I, I, this is a completely independent system to the microinverters. So if this breaks, I've still got solar. Yeah. If because of the microinverters, if one microinverter breaks, you still, still got, got nine panels. panels. Yeah. And also, if you've got multiple solar panels that you know your panels are all facing in the same direction with about the same degree of occlusion. Yeah. So they're probably outputting about the same. I would have thought. Yeah. So the, the, I've got. But a for fake some houses, I've got a fake plastic chimney that generates slightly less. Yeah. So so it's mar but it's marginal. I did a video covering it, and it's like it's so small the marginal mm. difference. But the, but other thing with the other thing with my converter is like for your mum, because yeah. she's got different orientations. That's what I was going to say. So if you've got panels where there's quite a big difference between what the different panels are generating, you don't want the voltage to be pulled down by the, by the low generating power Correct, yeah. Uh, panels. Yeah. So in that case, you know, microinverters is, is a great solution to that. Yeah, I mean, there's optimizers, which is a different technology. So yeah, which, is, which achieves the same thing but they theory. have more losses on optimizers ah. because your microinverter is your inverter so that yeah. one you know it, the, the losses on that microinverter are tiny if you were feeding into a hybrid inverter that's got losses but the losses on this my uh, hybrid inverter is more than all those 10 micros up there if you add an optimizer in that as well mm. the optimizer needs some power to run yeah so then your losses are slightly increased so if you're gonna you know microinverters for me made a lot of sense. I also like redundancy. One of the panel goes down or one of the microinverters breaks, I've got nine, eight, seven, I've still got panels that are going to work, but the advantage is if you're getting like multiple angles, like you normally need so many panels to make a voltage. Yeah. So like I've got a self array and I'm trying to convince Heatable like we should do a video and maybe putting two or three panels on that self array because they could just put two, three panels on there and they're completely separate from the other 10. Yeah. And comparing what they're doing. Oh, that's a great idea. <laughs> And you get extra solar, which is always nice. Yeah, but it'd be nice to like compare like what the difference is. But yeah, like, I saw some. I saw what they did a project roof the other week, which is it was a north, east, south, west roof, and all the, oh, wow. all the roofs could only fit like four panels on in between right. them. And if you did a string array, you'd be struggle to get most voltages off most days, or you'd have to have a string array with say three MPPTs. That's like solar inputs. Yeah, yeah. But with micros, you don't. You just go straight into AC. So it's, it's, it's really interesting. Yeah, it's, sort of, it's, it's horses for courses, but I mean, this is one of the things that I think actually a lot of people struggle with. Like, for example, my mum. She doesn't know or care or want to know truly about all of these details. I suppose to some extent it's a case of in the early days of, of the technology, it's difficult to know who to trust, if you see what I mean. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the problem is, is soul. Solar does have an industry sort of problem where it's a bit like double glazing salesmen. Yeah. Um, and there's a lot of people who fit solar who don't have a clue what they're doing. Um, I mean, when I was talking to, I was talking to Heatable and a couple of other companies when I was working for Solar Panel Ideas, and I wanted to partner with a company that I knew couldn't nationally cock it up. Right. Right. Because what I don't want to do is I don't want to start recommending or doing a project with a company where they do my job perfectly because they know they're being filmed. Yeah. And then go and mess up another six. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But you can't mess up a microinverter because it's it's plug and play into the back of the panel and then it's just AC out. Yeah. So you couldn't mess it up. But with with hybrid inverters, because it's a string inverter, if they one of them's got shading yeah. or they've damaged yeah, so the panel putting it on the roof, you wouldn't know. So as I understand it, you are never going to have solar panels go into the... Never. 
because, no. it, because that's not what the kind of solar panels you've no. got are, basically. Uh, very interesting. I still like the style of this one more. I, I've got to admit, <laughs> the styling of that one is, is a much better looking yeah. style. But, I mean, they do, they, do, they do the Give Energy All-in-One system, which mm. I think is quite expensive for what it is. Uh, they do the Tesla one. I wouldn't have the Tesla one in my house, personally. Um, not because of style, because it's NMC chemistry. Yeah. Where these are, these are Life Pro. These are these are um, safer, you know, the safer yeah. type of lithium. Uh, I personally wouldn't want NMC in my house. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's kind of. I, I would be inclined personally to to trust Tesla on that one, just because I know what the car batteries get put through. Yeah, it's not the fact that they think, don't burst it's, into flame it's, it's most not, of the time anyway. But it's not, I'm not worried about them bursting into flame. I'm worried about the uh, a someone damages the casing somehow. Yeah. Because it's on your it's in your house. We've got kids. We know what it's like. Yeah, that's true. So that's one possible risk that went through my head with, with Tesla. The other possible risk is there's a secondary fire. There's, there's, there's a fire yeah. somewhere else and it's near the Tesla. Yes. And then that's then fuel for making the fire worse. True. Where these they don't they don't they only vent hot gases. They don't explode. They don't they don't they don't fuel they've got no self fuel. They don't self fuel themselves where right. NMC can self fuel. Yeah. It's very low risk. In fact I interviewed uh, Dr. Ewan McTurk and asked him about the risk. And yeah. even he said, you know, if you're buying a trusted chemistry like Tesla's chemistry, it's not gonna randomly burst in flames. Yeah, and also, I mean, so I've, you know, there are quite a lot more EVs now. I'm yet to see an EV fire at the side of the road. When there is one, and they do happen, it's national news, yeah. essentially. But at the same time, I've driven past countless burnt-out petrol and diesel cars. Yeah, but it's not and, news. Sorry? It's not news. No, firstly, <laughs> firstly, it's not news. And secondly, when you have a petrol and diesel fire, you want to get out of that thing damn quick because it can just go boom yeah whereas with a battery fire even a volatile chemistry like you find in teslas it tends to be a case of the car alerts you to a problem you use a bit of a funny smell you pull over to the side of the road you get out and you go well this is not good is it <laughs> and you sort of stand there for the next 15 minutes as it self combusts yeah but it's not an emergency in the same no, way no, no, because the, the, it's the, not going to go Boom. They're more like long you know? burning fires than explosive yes. fires. Yes, and I suppose to, in, in that regard, as far as the in your house versus not in your house argument goes, the truth of the matter is houses go up pretty darn quick anyway. Although the battery is probably going to help to burn the house to the ground yes. rather than let it be something the fire brigade can sort of say, look, there's a burnt out shell for you. Congratulations. It, the reality is you're going to get out of the house at the same speed as you would anyway. Yeah, I mean, I, I, would I, I, I think Tesla are going to drop an NMC from Powerwalls. I think they're going to you go into, yeah, I think they're going to go LFP. <laughs> LFP makes more sense for storage. Yeah, but there's, there's cost advantages for Tesla. And that's the thing with Elon Musk. He's, he's, uh, he's all about the efficiencies. I, I, I'll, I'll you know? put my money on it that in the next 12 months, Tesla goes to, drops NMC for LFP in home really? storage. Yeah. <sighs> It's it's in it's in the standard range cars now, in the, in the Model Threes. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh well, in that case, in that case, yeah. I mean, you're you're 100 percent right. It's only if I didn't I didn't realise that the um that they had that in the in the Model Threes yeah. yet. Okay, fine. But that's, that's because that's, that's the thing. What, that's if they've the... got the batteries on on hand anyway, yeah. then they'll use the best chemistry that, that makes the most sense for well, the reason know, why. They, so the Model Three standard range has it, and that's why it doesn't charge as fast as the you know performance long range. Yeah. So if you've got a supercharger, you can't get two fifty speeds on the standard range. The newer shape, the older yeah. shape. Isn't still... it also a smaller battery though? Uh, marginally, but it's mainly because of the chemistry that can't, they, won't, they don't want to risk the, if you look at the new, if you know if you've got the new chemistry, yeah. if it says that you can charge to 100%. Right. So you know on a, your Tesla, my Model 3, it'll say don't charge, you know, tip, drive to, you know, charge to yeah, 80. you've got the sort of daily and yeah. then you've got the sort of trip section Yeah, so 90. on the LFP batteries yeah. it doesn't have that because you can store it 100%. It's, it's happy at 100, really happy. It, you can leave it 100 all the time. What's the cycle life and calendar life difference between these two battery chemistries? Any idea? I'll have to look into that. Topic for a future vlog post, perhaps. But, yeah, interesting. 
You, you, Ewan's the best person to ask for that's, that. I tell you what, the, one of the things that I recently learned that, um, that will have me never move from Samsung phones ever again, I recently was told there is a setting that lets you limit the battery charge to 85% in the phone. Oh my God. Because I've been doing this manually. I, c I couldn't find a way to do it. So I installed an app that would alert me when it gets to 80, 85, 90, 90, et cetera. Yeah. It makes a really annoying noise. It's, you know, it's just, ah, real pain. But it means that I've been unplugging at about 80 to 85. And my phones tend to get to the end of two years almost without any noticeable battery degradation. Yeah. So although I start off with a brand new phone that has got 20% less power than anybody else's phone, after two years, going to 80%, I've got more than them going to 100%. And two years beyond that, my phone is still functional and theirs is in the bin. So, you know, I'm a big fan of the whole sort of oh, wait, wait, me, managing your battery. Yeah, me and James behave so much differently. So I charge mine to 100% all the time. Yeah. And then when it gets knackered, I just put a new battery in it. Yeah, well, that's that's the other way of doing things, I suppose. <laughs> because right. it would bug me not having 100%. Because like, a lot of days I need 100% charge. Yeah. Um, oh, you see, I just carry a, a secondary <laughs> battery round with me, as you saw in the... The main advantage of these LFPs is that you can, you can leave them at 100. That's what, the, that's what they're designed for. That's a good, yeah. I mean, this one goes down to 4% as state, state, state of charge. That one's 10%. So this one goes really low. Yeah. My mum's one goes really low. Um, but it's, it's what they've been tested. Like, like... Yeah, I'd still rather... I think the problem that my mum's one has got is... I mean, if money was no object, then clearly what she should have done is have two uh, uh, Tesla Powerwalls. Yeah. Because then it, the problem is, because she's got a heat pump that runs all the heating in the house, yeah. she, the potential power draw from that system is huge. Is she on Octopus Cozy? I, at the moment, she's just on the standard Octopus, I think. Oh, no, she wants to be on Cozy. Um, so she wants co Cozy Octopus. So Octopus oh, right, do a heat pump tariff where they have two dips in yeah. the day and one peak. So they have a peak between four and seven, right. and, the, and then the rest of it's cheap electricity. Not like cheap Yes, I think she's, she's looking at that. She's looking to, to change the tariff. She's yeah. just trying to work out at the moment which one will make the most sense. Cozy probably with a heat pump, because she's not got an EV. But if she's charging your she EV, EV. Well, she's charging your EV intelligent, because then she, so she can, so the next plan, the next thing for the house mm. is heat pump for me. So. The, what I'll be doing with it is supercharging the heat during cheat rate. So if it goes right. to half 11 and it's 7.5p, I will heat the house, heat the house to like 40c crazy. to get the house as hot as possible, get, that, get, get the heat in the house, because houses will yeah. store heat if they're, if they're insulated. And then that heat will transfer to the day so I can run the heat pump lower for the rest of the day. Yeah, that makes sense. So she's probably better like looking how when it's cheap and then superheating... The fl you know, the, the house is temperature, and then the house will gently drop the temperature lower. I think she'd probably rather just have more of a constant temperature, but... Well, so some heat pumps, I'll like, you store it, it into the tank at a high temperature, just not float around the house. Well, and also, because it's, um, her house has got underfloor heating... Yeah. So... So she's got a firm, quite a large yeah, thermal mass got, store then. Yeah, she, exactly. She's got quite a lot of thermal mass. Perfect, perfect phrase. Yeah. Anyway, what an interesting conversation. Thank you for showing me your fascinating batteries. Been very interesting. Cheers. All right, James. No. Nice. Your hands are freezing. I told you. <laughs> I told you they were. I've gone numb. The garage door's open. We are not used to the weather in the, the north. Oh, that's not going to work, is it? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah, GoPros, they're not the best in the dark. Right, I just want to say, actually, V, could you just hold that light for a yeah, sec? Okay. Thank you. Because otherwise I can't do my trademarked bye. <laughs> <laughs> right, anyway, so, yeah, that, that was really good. Thank you very much, Nick. And so, so chuffed to, you know, come up and, and see you all. Just had a lovely pizza, so I've got a nice full stomach. And we're heading home now. So I'm going to say goodbye for the day. I hope you've enjoyed today's video and found it fun and interesting and informative. If you have, remember to leave a like and share it and subscribe if you haven't already. You can follow me on Instagram and X, links in the description. Also, a link to Nick's channel will be in the description. And I will see you all in the next episode of my vlog. Bye.